Hello everyone, my name is Francois, and today we're going to get your audio set up perfectly. Unfortunately, YouTube is filled with a bunch of inaccurate tutorials when it comes to voice meter, voice meter banana, and voice meter potato. Voice meter by nature is just well, slightly confusing. If you don't have any experience with audio prior to looking at voice meter, all of the knobs and the volume sliders and all of the buttons on the application might be very confusing for you. And that is the major reason for all of the inaccurate videos that are all over YouTube. But don't worry, I can assure you this is gonna be the only voice meter video that you'll need to watch when it comes to setting up voice meter banana. Whether you just wanna set up your microphone to get that boost in audio quality in your microphone Phone, or you want a full-on professional god tier audio mix for your desktop there will be two portions to this video in the first portion of the video we'll talk about setting up your microphone and voice meter how to set it up in other applications and what kind of adjustments you can make to your microphone within voice meter this portion is for those of you that want to quickly get your microphone set up in voice meter and never have to watch this video again you can visit the timestamp on the screen if you want to go ahead and get started with that setup the second portion of this video is for those of you that want a god tier audio mix for your desktop and your stream if you're a content creator this portion of the video is particularly perfect for you because we'll talk about separating our desktop audio our music our browser our microphone audio and all that stuff within our broadcasting software giving us more control when it comes to applying vst plugins applying filters and also just having an additional volume slider for each one of those sources giving us way more control when it comes to the audio mix for the content that we create even if you're not a content creator and you just want to have the best audio mix that you possibly can on your desktop this portion of the video is for you if at any point in this video you get confused or you have trouble understanding something that's being explained feel free to hop in my discord server or gilded server for additional assistance from the community if you want to reach out to me directly on twitter you can tweet at me at the francois and while you're looking at the links in the description you might as well check out all of these socials that i have linked below with that being said i think it's time that we uh store up some knowledge pancakes for your brain pan and cook up an awesome audio mix all of the downloads that you need for this video are linked in the description below for this first portion of the video all you need is voice meter banana keep in mind when you download voice meter banana from voice meters website it will actually download all three versions of the application so when you go to open the application you need to make sure you open the voice meter banana app you can do so by searching in your windows search bar and typing in banana and voice meter banana will pop up here otherwise by default it will open the base version of voice meter when you first open up voice meter banana this is what it's going to look like you have the hardware inputs on the left this is where we can select devices that we have hooked up to our computer things like our microphones in the middle we have virtual inputs this is where we can send virtual devices that are on our computer for instance music applications to these sources in the bottom right, we have the master section. This is going to be our volume sliders and our controls for our hardware outputs and our virtual outputs. I don't wanna confuse you. We'll talk more about that later. And then above that, we have the hardware outputs A1 through A3. This is where we can select things like our speakers and our headphones. Before we can do anything on voice meter, we actually need to set up an A1 device on the application. But before we do that, we have to set a playback device on our desktop. Otherwise, we won't be able to hear anything. For instance, you'll lose the sound for this video. So the way that we do that is by clicking or right clicking on the speaker icon in the bottom right of your windows and going to sounds. Once you're in sounds, you can click on the playback tab. We're going to scroll down till we find the voice meter input. We're going to click on that input and we're going to set it to default. We're going to hit OK on that. Once we've done that, we're ready to set up 
our device on the A1 source. So what we're going to do is select our main source on the A1 selection here. You can pick your speakers, your headphones, whatever you use on a day-to-day -day basis needs to be selected here. You'll notice that there are multiple selections for the same source. In front of those selections, it will say WDM, MME, or ASIO, or KS. Uh, these are different driver types that will run that device. If you're on Windows, WDM will have the lowest latency uh, outside of A. ASIO. So I suggest you use WDM, but if you have issues with like crackly noises or anything like that, you can try switching this over to MME. After we've set up our speakers or headphones on our A1 source, we're ready to set up our microphone within voice meter. So if you left click on that input, it will drop down a list of your options and just go ahead and select your microphone. After you select your microphone, you should see that meter rising up and down, indicating that you're speaking into your mic. Just so you don't forget that this is where your microphone source is, if you right click on the title here, we can change the name of this source over to microphone. After we've done that, I'm gonna have have you toggle off the B1 and switch this over to B2. The reason we do that is so that you don't accidentally forget to toggle off all of these other B1s uh, when we're setting up our microphone on different applications, creating echoes and all kinds of nonsense. So we use the B2 source just to make it easier. Real quick, before we continue, I wanna kind of summarize what we just did. We set our default playback device on our desktop to the virtual input, which is this source here, the voice meter VIO input. So all desktop audio will play on this source. We wanna make sure we have the A1 source toggled because this is going to send that audio to our speakers or headphones whatever you selected on that A1 device in the hardware outputs. Then we set up our microphone on the hardware input one and we switched it from B1 over to B2. Now that we've done all that, we're actually ready to set up our microphone in applications. There are two ways we can go about doing this. One, you can set the default recording device on your desktop to the voice meter output that we selected just now or you can manually select the voice meter source in every single one of your applications. It's a whole lot easier to set the default recording device and then setting all your applications to default than it is selecting the source in all of your applications. So what I'm gonna do is show you how to do that. So if you again, right click on the speaker icon, go over to sounds and then go to the recording tab. We're gonna scroll down till we find the voice meter aux output the reason we're looking for this source is because the B2 source is the voice meter aux output. So what we've done is set our microphone to that source. Then we're gonna set up this source as our microphone on our computer. Pretty awesome, right? Now to make things easier so we don't get confused and keep saying voice meter aux and voice meter this, what we're gonna do is rename this source. What we can do is right click it, go to properties. In the properties, what we're gonna name this is voice meter microphone and go ahead, apply that and hit okay. Now you don't have to think twice about whether or not you're selecting the right source because it's labeled voice meter microphone. What you're gonna do is select that source and set it to default. After you've set it to default, go ahead and hit okay. Now every single application that has the input device set up as default, we'll have your microphone from voice meter being sent to it. For instance, if we take a look at Discord here, my input device is set to default and it's recognizing my microphone, as you can tell on this slider here. Now, if you don't see it popping up there, what you can do is manually select the voice meter microphone source or the voice meter aux output source that we sent our microphone to. Now you can do this in every single application that you use, but most likely it will just work if you keep it on default. So now let's talk a little bit about what you can do to make your microphone sound just a little bit better. I'm gonna highlight some of the major things that you can do within Voice Meter Banana. The first thing is the color panel here or the IntelliPan. This is an EQ of sorts. On the left side, you can add some lows or some bass. On the right side, I know it says high, but you can add actually some mids to your vocals. And then when you raise it up, you'll add some highs into your vocals. And then once you cross that line, it will actually create an echoing kind of effect. Most people 
find that they like it, you know, sitting in a little bit on that low, a little bit on that high, you know, right in there in that mix. Now, if you double click on that, it will actually reset to the default location. Below that, we have the audibility. There are two dials in the audibility. You have the compression on the left side and the noise gate on the right side. These are gonna be some really friendly tools for you. The compression that is on voice meter has an auto makeup gain. So when you increase that dial, it's going to compress the low end of the volume signal and the high end of the volume signal, but it's also going to increase the volume at the same time. So not only is it compressing or squishing the audio signal, it's also raising the volume. So when you increase this dial, you also want to decrease the volume on the source. Otherwise, the source will get extremely loud and a little bit goes a long way with the compression on voice meter. The dial on the right is a noise gate filter. The noise gate filter will essentially set the floor volume of your microphone source. So that means when you increase the dial, it's going to start cutting off the lower end of your mic. This is a great way to remove background noise. If you have a lot of noise in the background, just keep in mind that if you increase that dial too high, it will cut off your vocals and it will sound really bad. So make sure you use it lightly and only in cases that you need it. There are two more things I want to talk about when it comes to the settings for your microphone. If you left click on the meter here and drag down, you have a limiter. So this is a great way to help prevent your microphone from clipping but you know you can do this also by just adjusting the volume of the source last but not least i want to talk about the eq that's built into voice meter since we selected that b2 source if we take a look at the master section the bottom right we have the b2 right here if we right click on this source we have an eq that's available on a voice meter this is another way you can adjust the audio signal of your microphone I suggest you look up some EQ tutorials on YouTube uh, if you're going to start diving into EQ. A channel that I suggest is In The Mix. He does great content on EQ, especially when it comes to vocals. So check out In The Mix uh, for some EQ guides. I plan on releasing some myself as well, but he has great content when it comes to EQ. So definitely check him out. After you've done that, guys, you've successfully set up your microphone within Voice Meter Banana. You've made the adjustments that you want and you're ready to go. If you want a better or the most extreme setup that you possibly can have with Voice Meter Banana, we're ready to jump into the second portion of this video. For the second portion of this video, there are two things that are required. One is the virtual audio cables and ear trumpet. Both of those downloads are linked in the description below. The virtual audio cable is what we're gonna set up on our hardware input too. And this is what we're going to use to send our browser and music audio sources too. So after you set that up, you can change the name to browser slash music. Now, if you want to separate the browser and music into different inputs, you'll need an additional audio cable and the additional audio cables cost money. You can find them on vb-audio.com or you can download voice meter potato, which has a third virtual input on the app. After you've done that, we're ready to actually route our browser and music audio to that source. What we're going to use is Ear Trumpet. Now, Ear Trumpet is a routing tool available for us on Windows. Windows 10 does have a built-in routing tool in the apps and device preferences within the sound settings, but we suggest Ear Trumpet because it works better and it is more reliable. The built-in feature sometimes doesn't stick and it requires you to go back in and adjust the settings. That's why we suggest Ear Trumpet. In order to send our audio from our browser and music sources, we need to make sure we have both of those apps open with audio playing on those applications. Then what we're gonna do is hit the up arrow here, go to the speaker icon. This will expand Ear Trumpet and we'll go find the logo for our browser source. We'll right click on that source. We'll click the double arrow 
and we'll send that to the virtual audio cable. You can repeat that same process for your music application as well. Now I'm gonna show you how to separate your communication audio, so audio from Discord and TeamSpeak and Skype or any application that Windows detects as a communication app. So if we go back to the sound control panel on the playback tab, we're gonna scroll down till we find the voice meter aux input. We're going to right click on that source and set it as our default communication device. You can go ahead and apply and hit OK. What we've just done is set it so all of our Discord audio, all of our Skype audio, all of our TeamSpeak audio, any of our communication applications will be sent to this voice meter aux input source here. So you can go ahead and right click this and change the name over to comms or communications or whatever you wanna have it. That means that this source here is going to be our desktop audio source because we've pulled off music, browser, and communication audio from that source. All that's left is our desktop audio and our video game audio or any other application that you have. Now that we've done that, I'm gonna show you how to separate all of these sources within OBS so that you have a bit more control when it comes to your video recordings and your streaming. Now that we're here in OBS, there's two ways that you can do this. You can do it within the settings of OBS or you can create audio sources in the sources window. I'm gonna show you how to do it both ways. The first way is by going into to the settings here, going to the audio section. And what we're gonna do is set our desktop audio to the voice meter input source. We'll set up the desktop audio two as our communication source, which will be voice meter aux input. Then we'll set our microphone to the voice meter aux output or the voice meter microphone. And then last but not least, we'll set the next microphone source to the virtual audio cable or our browser audio. Alternatively, you can disable each one of these sources and set those audio sources up in the sources window. So what we'll do is create a new source. We'll create an audio input capture. You'll name it microphone and what you'll do is select the voice meter aux output or the voice meter microphone source as your microphone for that source. Then we'll create another audio input capture and this will be our browser audio which will select our virtual audio cable. And then we'll create two audio output captures. The first one will be our desktop audio source which will be the voice meter input and the second will be our communication audio which will be our voice meter aux input. After you've done that you can go in and apply filters to each one of these sources if you choose. Limiters, compression, side chains, any VST plugins that you download from the internet can be applied as a filter to these audio sources. Also, if you want to, you can hold down on control and left click on each one of these and group them together uh, so that you can you know, copy and paste that group into each one of your scenes. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. Like I said before, if you guys need any additional assistance after watching this video, feel free to hop in my Gilded server or Discord server and my community will assist you. If you're looking for ways to support this channel, check out my Gilded subscriptions within my server linked in the description below. Also linked below is a link to my Patreon. I recently updated a lot of the benefits for my Patreon pledgers. So if you're interested in becoming a patron, definitely check that out. Before I sign off, I want to say a special thanks to all the Patreons that are currently pledging. Llama, Jacko, Preston, Jahones, Don, Dan, Guy, Joseph, Corey, Amir, Tim, and Orion. You guys have been supporting for a very long time and I appreciate everything that you guys do. Thank you so much for your endless support and I hope you have a good one. Peace.